I wanted to jump on today. There's been a lot of resounding questions that I've heard from clients in the last few weeks in regards to how this crisis in Ukraine is going to affect our housing economy. Sellers are wondering if they should still list their home. Buyers are wondering if they should wait to buy. I've also seen an uptick in viewers watching my more extensive video of what to expect in the 2022 housing market that I posted in January. So I felt today would be a good time to get an update out to everybody due to the recent events. So what is next? How will real estate in the United States be affected? Let's dig into it. Just when we thought we had an idea of what we could expect this new year of 2022, continued seller market due to low inventory, increased construction growth, thankfully, adding housing inventory, rising interest rates to fight inflation, and a slowing of home price appreciation taking us out of the double digits, down rain the bombs in Ukraine and the stock market went even more crazy than it had been. There are a few factors that are key players in determining what most likely lie ahead for our housing market. Looking at energy is the first one. As most people know, Russia is both the second largest oil producer and second largest natural gas producer on earth. Europe relies on Russia for nearly 40% of its natural gas and 25% of its oil. We've seen BP, Shell, and Exxon sever ties with the oil producers in Russia in the last week or so, and all experts warn oil and gas prices will greatly increase. Biden and the EU have secured some release of stockpiled gas barrels, but they are in no way a fix and will not stop the shortage expected to be felt throughout the year. The increased cost of oil and gas will not only be felt in our monthly heating bills and at the pump, which I know we are already experiencing, but in many other areas as well. Oil is a surprising component of production in many goods and supplies that surround our daily lives. Toothpaste, gum, makeup, solar panels, clothing, plastics to name a few, all use petroleum byproducts in production. Wait, what? It's also a component in many building supplies such as flooring linoleum and carpets. It's used in foam insulation for houses and insulation in refrigerators. The reduction and slowing of producing these products will tighten the supply chain. Another avenue to address too is not only the cost of the goods, but the transportation of them. If gas prices rise, it will cost more to ship and transport everything. Added costs to that are typically passed down to the consumer, meaning more raised prices for the goods that are being shipped. This would affect new builds in two ways. One, the cost of new construction homes is likely to rise due to the higher cost of the goods. Two, the timing of things being built could slow due to slower supply chains. If builds were to slow, there may be less homes by the end of the year coming on the market than originally expected. Less housing inventory leads to continued price appreciation of homes. Price appreciation could grow greater than the original anticipation of 5-7% to if the supply of homes doesn't increase as the experts were originally anticipating for the year. Another factor, looking at inflation. Last year, inflation rose about 7%. Some reports even say 7.5%. It's the highest that it's been since the early 80s. As prices go up, inflation could get worse. As a buyer, you will wanna watch your budget and your spending. As costs for goods, gas, and rents rise, you may have to adjust what you purchase each month so that you do not get into a position of adding debt to credit cards or taking money out of savings, both which can affect your purchasing power and or ability to purchase. The experts had previously expected rates to rise multiple times throughout 2022 to tamper down the already high inflation. And since the beginning of the year, we've actually seen interest rates on a slow rise due to the 10-year treasury bond fluctuations. The feds have been set to have their first meeting of the year, March 15th and 16th. And the original expectation was that the first rate increase would be seen after this meeting by about up to half a percent. But when Russia invaded Ukraine, it threw more uncertainty into the market. The feds now will not only be looking at how to counteract the current inflation, but will be balancing how aggressive they can or cannot be in these times. With the threat of greater inflation ahead, they cannot afford to not address the rates. But many experts that I follow are hesitant to say that they expect rates to go up any more than a quarter of a percent this first meeting. As a buyer, you should be aware of what your lender has quoted you for an anticipated interest rate and monthly payment. You should also be having conversations with your lender to know as rates increase how this will affect your monthly payment and if this will lower how much you are pre-qualified to purchase a house for. As a seller, be aware that as rates rise throughout the year, 
Some buyers will drop out of the market due to no longer being able to qualify for the monthly payment necessary for the cost of a home. Though the shortage of homes is expected to continue, by year end there may be less competition for homes. Sellers may see less offers on a home, maybe only one to four offers versus the five, 10, 15 plus offers each home last year was experiencing. If you're selling, you will want to recognize not only what a realistic price for your home sale will look like, especially if you're using the equity to put down on a new house, but also just as I mentioned for buyers, how the rising of the rates will affect you in buying a new home and what you're qualify in those payments. Another area that affects the housing market is the stock market. With concerns about inflation, the expected rate increases and the slowing pace of the economic growth, investors have already shown since January that they feel we're in uncertain times. When Russia invaded Ukraine, it only confirmed the year of uncertainty. Investors do not like the unknown, so the stocks will continue to see volatility. As property is a tangible asset, as is gold and silver, we may see more buyers coming onto the market as people pull money out of the stocks to buy the tangible asset of property. In a market with more buyers than we have housing supply for, more buyers can make for an even tighter purchasing market. One offset though possibly to this is that the stock market has dropped this year. Some buyers that had planned to take money from the stocks to use as down payment on homes may no longer have that down money saved to the amounts that they did a few months ago and may have to be holding off buying as they continue to save more money. Updated anticipation overall, we may see interest rates increase at a slower pace than originally expected due to the conflict in Ukraine. The uncertainty could misleadingly have sellers hesitant to put their homes for sale in the short term, and new construction inventory could slow from what was anticipated, all leading to shrinking, not growing inventory. This will keep prices of homes appreciating higher and in fact could increase home prices more near towards the double digits this year versus the original thought of five to 7%. We could have new buyers coming to the market if they leave the stock market, but with the rise of rates and goods, as an offset, we may have buyers priced out of the market by year end. Now, one side note for buyers to consider, along with goods and gas, rents are still continuing to rise with no expectation that they will change. With home rates still historically low, even if they do cross the 4% mark, which is still historically low, buyers can still hedge inflation by locking their monthly housing payment for the next 30 years by buying a house. So how do you leverage this information and position yourself? If you've been planning to buy a house this year, stay the course, don't edge onto the sidelines. Rates and home prices will rise, and the earlier that you can purchase in the year, the more money that you save over the next 30 years. If you've been planning to sell, earlier in the year it still appears to be the greatest chances of maximizing your investment as inventory still remains so tight. If and when this crisis ends, anyone that's been on the sideline, buyers and sellers alike, will all come back onto the market together. If you found this interesting and or useful, let me know by clicking the like button. That's how I know. If you'd like to see what I have to say next week, hit the subscribe button to be notified every time I post a new video and stick around to watch more things about all things real estate related to living in, moving to, buying and selling here in Yamhill County. Bye.